Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're going to look at how we can link objects together, uh, such as these levers and uh, doors and boxes, uh, in a more uh, useful way than the last time we looked at it, where we uh, checked out how we could rename instances to link objects together. Today we're going to look at how we can do it with color, uh, such that in a more complex scene like this one, it is easier to tell which objects will interact with which. So let's go right into our starter project, which I have link, a link to in the description of this video, where we have a, like four really simple objects, a wall object with nothing in it, a lever object, which just has two uh, piece of code, one that stops it from being animated, and the second which allows it to change when you click on it. So it will go from image index one to image index zero. The one under that is the box object. This is really quite simple. It has a create event with, again, something to stop the animation from running. User defined zero is supposed to be turning the object on. So we just have something setting the image index to be one. And user defined one is turning it off. So we have image index be zero. Same with the door. Uh, we have a create event with just stopping the animation from running. We have the two user-defined objects, which will start the animation for each uh, state. Same one here, but negative instead of positive. And a simple step event, which will just make sure our code, um, that our object stops animating when it reaches the end of its animation. That's a pretty simple piece of code right here. So let's start off by realizing that we can have multiple types of triggerable objects. So we have to create a parent object called par underscore triggerable. And that's all we're gonna do with it. Just press okay. And now make sure all of your child objects, all of your actual you know, objects in your scene actually ha are childed to that object. So uh, with our boss, we're gonna select par triggerable over here. Same with the door. And that is it for now. Uh, let's just open up our lever objects, which is right here, and go inside the create event in order to set all of our object uh, linking system. So let's make sure this is nice and big so you can see what I am doing. We're going to start off by defining our target object. This is the object that's actually gonna be triggered. So I'm gonna write var, no, not var, sorry, just target is equal to uh, no one, because we don't want any targets. Next, we're going to go loop through every single triggerable object. And to do this, we're going to write this uh, for loop. So for var i equals zero, i is smaller than instance number. Uh, and we're going to look at for par underscore triggerable. I plus plus. So this is gonna uh, start with I being zero and it's gonna go up until it reaches the number of triggerable objects. Now we need to retrieve the actually actual instance uh, that belongs to that number. So we're gonna do var instance is equal to instance find. And we're gonna look for par triggerable again. And I is uh, n is i. So what this does, it will take um, an object and a index, and it will find the nth uh, instance of that object. So if you have uh, four different objects, they'll each be numbered zero through three, and you can use this uh, variable over here to decide which one to select. Now that we have the instance, we can check to see if the color is the same on the instance we just selected and, our, and the current lever we're working with. So we can say if instance dot image blend uh, instance dot image blend is equal to image blend. So if the colors are the same on this object and the instance, then we can say that the target is equal to the instance. So this will loop through all of the objects uh, using this right here, all the instances that are triggerable. It will then find an actual instance uh, from triggerable with uh, this number and say that if we, they have the same color, if the box or the door's color is the same as the lever's color, 
then we're going to target the instance. Now, because we're going to be uh, recoloring the object inside the room, inside the room editor, we need to set the object to be uh, white again, such that it doesn't look orange or red or whatever color inside the game. And to do that, we're simply going to write image blend is equal to C underscore white. Now, if you want, if you want uh, in your game to have the same colors, uh, because that's how your game works, you can leave this line out. However, in most games, I think you may want to keep it. So this is it for now for the lever object. Uh, now all that we have to do is inside the left pressed event, we can bring up this code again, and start actually triggering the object. And this is quite simple. We're just going to say with target, with target event user zero. So we're telling the target to execute event user zero, which is turning it on. And here we can say with target event user one, which is turning it off. Pretty simple. So now we can just go straight into our room and start adding levers and other things. So let's add a lever right here and add a box right here, for example. And if you want this lever to interact with this box, you can just select the lever, click the little color option over here, make it, for example, green, and then select the box and make it green as well. And now the lever and the box will be linked. Uh, we can do the same with another lever and the door, for example. So we can add a lever right here and a door under here. Again, let's color code them. I like to use yellow because it doesn't look too bad. And let's add yet another box just to show that you can have a wide variety of different objects. Like you can have the same objects multiple times, it'll still work perfectly fine so long as you use different colors. And as you can see, it's really quick and easy to see which lever will trigger what box and so on. Now we can press uh, play here, uh, okay here. There's one last thing we need to do before we press play. And let's go inside the box object inside the create event and write image blend is equal to C white. That again is to stop it from actually being green or yellow inside your game. And same with the door. Image blend equals C white. Now I'm gonna press play and there may be an issue. And if there is, that's great because I can show you something else. That's quite important to note. And so this works here. This will trigger the uh, door. And this, as you can see, does not light up this box over here, even though they are colored the same color. And actually, this took me quite a while to figure out what the problem was. And it's actually quite simple. If we open up the room and bring up the instance order, which is this button between the plus icon and the question mark, we can see that one of our levers is right at the bottom which means it will get, uh, the code will run afterwards. And because our box is before, it's probably this one here, uh, this box here is right before this lever, it will set its color back to white before this lever has the time to actually set itself to it. So what we're gonna do is just move it up such that the lever is placed before. Another option would be to actually go inside here and set the depth of the lever to a negative value to make sure all the code gets executed afterwards. Uh, I'm not always sure which one's best because if your game has a lot of complicated depth system, uh, you may need your lever to be of the same depth as your box and then you have to use the instance order. If not, then just set the lever to be minus 10 uh, just in case. And now if we press play, we should have uh, everything working just fine. This lever interacts with the box on the far left. This lever here interacts with the box beneath it. And this one here opens this door. Now there's one more thing that we may want to have, and that is one lever interacting with multiple objects. And for this, we need a slight change to our code. But first of all, let's set up the situation, which is maybe you want to have a box over here and right below it, you may want to have a door and you want a single lever, this one here, for example, to interact with both of those doors. So what you would do is first of all, set the color 
to be, let's choose uh, red. We haven't used red yet. So we set the color on each of those objects to be red. But remember, if we look at our lever code in the create event, we only have one target variable. Uh, and what we're going to do is change this to be a target list. So we have a list of different possible targets. I'm going to rename this target list is equal to ds list create, which will create a new list for us to use. Now, what's important to note is that we do have to free that list afterwards. Uh, that's a pretty easy memory leak to uh, forget about. But here, instead of saying target equals instance, we're going to do ds list add. So we're adding to the list. Uh, the list we're adding to is our target list. And what we're adding is our instance. So we're now we can, we're able to store multiple targets if they have the same color. Press OK. Go into our left press event. Here we use a target variable which doesn't actually exist. So uh, because we changed it to target list. And we cannot do with target list. That's, that doesn't work, unfortunately. So what we have to do is add a new loop for var r equals 0. I is more than ds list size target list i plus plus. So this will um, this loop here will start with i being uh, zero and go all the way up to uh, one less than the size of our of our list. So we're gonna put parentheses around this such that with target is within the for loop. But we still don't have an actual target variable. So right down here, we're going to write var target is equal to ds list find value. Uh, the value the, the list is obviously target list, and the position is i. Now we have to do the exact same thing down here where we use event user one. But instead of rewriting everything, I'm just going to copy the whole for loop paste it down here, and change event 0 to event 1. So again, to recap, what we're doing is with this for loop, we're looping through all of the values in our list, uh, well, all of the uh, ind indices of our list. Here we're finding what the actual value bound to that index is. And here we're doing the same thing as before, saying that our object has to do event 0 or event 1 down here. Now we can press OK, press play, and we should be able to target multiple objects. So what we wrote before still works, but now we're able to uh, not do this. Probably instance order, I'm guessing. Yeah, just put, move it to the top. Let's try this again. Still no, which is... Interesting. So I think if we recreate that lever, maybe this, I think may be an issue with GameMaker, though it could also be my code, but I've had the same problem when I was testing and just moving things around, got it to work again. It only does it with the object that is... Um, Oh no, here you go, wait, I know why. Oh, that's the wrong button. Our, lev our box is up here, let's move that to the bottom. And I think we probably have a door here. No, that's in the right position. That really should be working. Now. Here you go. Yeah, so again, just instance order is quite important in this case, which can be kind of a pain, but there's no real way around it. But as you can see, we can now have a much more complicated system with many more levers and many more things to interact with. And in a, inside our room, it's really quite clear which object is, in, is uh, bound to which one. You just have to look at the color. And what's great is that there are a huge amount of colors. If I just select, for example, this lever, you have all of these basic colors, which is already pretty nice, and you can even define custom colors. Now, the one thing is that if two colors are kind of the same, it may be hard to determine uh, the difference between them, but I think that, you know, you can easily find a whole range of colors. You know, you can use black, gray, white uh, as well. 
you can use dark versions of each of the colors. So you can end up with um, you can end up with a huge number of levers, and it's really quite easy and fast to see which one is bound where. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe for more. You can also ask questions down below or suggest any future videos. I'll make sure to answer them as fast as I can. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.